And good morning, One Life. It's good to be on the call with you. I was making sure. We've got some new controls here. I think David mentioned that last week. So I wasn't sure if uh, the phone was active or not, but uh, I see now that it is. Thank you for being on the call with us for yet another conference call. Uh, I am your host, Jeff Bowles, and I will be with you through the duration of the call this morning. Um, actually, I've had some things that I wanted to bring to the table a few times in the past, but uh, didn't feel it was the right timing uh, or whether or not you guys would even care to listen. So um, I wanted to bring something this morning, so that's what I'll do. So I'll be with you for the duration. And again, I want to talk to you about something that I feel is very important. It's a key component to success here at One Life and, and just in the life in general, and that is community. Uh, and the company that you keep. So uh, we'll get to that here shortly. Plus, I'll also tie in uh, kind of our devotion in with the talk today. So uh, before we do that, we obviously always have our marketing and production updates. Uh, and as you all well know, I'm sure we're gearing up for our fourth quarter Academy and Leadership Summit. So make sure you register. You can actually do so now online and you can do that at onelifeamerica.com go to our academy tab and you can uh, register there we have a, a tab there uh, or excuse me a uh, hyperlink there at the bottom it says register now you can do that there and get ready to uh, be a part of what we've got going on we've got an academy and leadership summit actually we're going to make the leadership summit available on the first day to all attendees to all the different breakout groups that we're going to have so uh, if you're coming for the Academy, maybe you're a new agent, it would be a great opportunity for you to glean from some of the great speakers we're going to have, including Mr. Ted DiBiase Sr. and Ted DiBiase Jr., plus several other great speakers that we're going to have with us, some notable names, and we'll be releasing those here soon. I believe David uh, Hosh, our Director of Marketing already has released a few of them, so uh, we're really excited for what's in store for our Academy and Leadership Summit that's coming up December, let me pull the dates back up, December 5th through 7th, I believe. Yeah, that is correct. Just wanted to check and make sure here on my notes. So make sure you register on the website, onelifeacademy. Excuse me, onelifeamerica.com. You can register there. Also, the second point I wanted to bring to you, don't forget to check out our Monday Slam. Speaking of one of our very own, Mr. Ted DiBiase Jr. is hosting those for us every Monday morning. Uh, they've been terrific thus far, and we always look forward to what he brings us on the YouTube channel. So make sure you check us out there, and you want to use that tool for yourself and for others. You can certainly use the name of Mr. Ted DiBiase Jr., quite a notable name, recognizable name to the general public. So take advantage of that and maybe show some folks the video and and they get them pumped up about One Life, maybe a recruit or something like that. want to bring you now to the production update. Uh, we had an excellent week. For all of One Life, we did $830,000 plus, plus some change there uh, for the week of 1024 through 1028. We'll move now to our teams. At number five, United Senior Brokerage, affectionately known as USB, came in with a terrific week, guys. $55,199 of submitted annualized production. Number four on the list, Team Iridium with 63192 At number three, Legacy United out of Lakeland. $71,933 worth of submitted AP. Number two on the list, jockeying back and forth as always, these top two. Number two this week, Life Management Group with $72,743. So Lakeland, hey, just about $1,000, a little less than $1,000 behind Life Management. Uh, but at number one, uh, again, the reigning leaders, uh, for the last several weeks, Innovative Insurance Brokers coming in at number one with $149,433 worth of submitted annualized premium. Congratulations, Innovative Insurance Brokers. And now for our top, top ten list for the agents. At number ten, Marilyn Newman, 7828 Number nine, Amy Livingston, 8184 Number eight, Juan Gomez. Eight thousand four ninety five seven Ed Barshin uh, with eight thousand six hundred eighty two number six 
Merlandi Charles with 9,703 and a new name to the list and a challenging one at that as we get into the top five, Kamau Kinnan. Uh, I believe is the way you pronounce that. Uh, if it's not, uh, feel free to let me know, uh, Kamayu. Uh, $9,895 for Kamayu. Number four, Nikki Yost with $10,665. Number three, William Jackal, 11133 At number two, Adam Daly, 11160 And number one, a new agent, I believe, to the top spot on our agent of the week list. The agent of the week, Mr. Brian Mitchell with $11,527 of submitted annualized premium. Uh, normally we do an introduction here, but uh, I don't think I need introduction, being that uh, you guys listen in on the call every week. I am Jeff Bowles, marketing rep here at One Life and work closely hand-in-hand with our director of marketing, Mr. David Hosh, and also do some recruiting and training here at One Life. My background, just to give you a little bit of an update, I'd been around people like Alan Bowles, my uh, uncle, I call him, even though he's uh, probably, I think, a second cousin, third cousin, something like that. Uh, But I'd been around Alan, my father, David. Uh, Several members of my family had been here at One Life and were successful, and they had just larger-than-life personalities. I didn't see myself being quite that person, but, uh, you know, my father... Uh, urged me to give the call center an opportunity, so I thought that might be the gateway uh, to try out One Life. And there was this new guy named Scotty Elliott that was new to the scene, and I knew him, didn't know him extremely well, but uh, knew of him and and would consider him a friend. So when he came on, I was excited about that, but didn't know what to think. Uh, To be quite honest with you, Scotty, of course, has proven himself in spades, one of the most genuine people you'll ever meet, and I had the opportunity to uh, become part of of a growing uh, One Life. We had just, again, rebranded ourselves, and we're starting to focus uh, back on our original thrust and getting back to final expense. So anyway, uh, to make a long story short, I did it for five or six years and for family reasons recently, I actually left One Life for a short period. And I got the opportunity to come back here in this role at One Life, be marketing rep here, and also do some recruiting and training, and I jumped on it. I always loved the team here at One Life, and I love what we do. What I want to talk to you about today is something I feel like a lot of agents struggle with, and what are some of the safeguards you can put in place to continue to be successful. It's certainly true. You get a new guy in. And uh, they take to the business, they're successful right away. They do really well, but something happens when they struggle. And one of the first things I see a lot of agents do is pull away uh, from from the group. There's an old uh, saying, I'm sure you've all heard it. I'm going to take a quote here from a 17th century English minister and poet named John Donnie, I believe is the way he pronounced that, but we've all heard the saying, it says, no man is an island entire of itself. Uh, He goes on to talk about how you are connected to people, whether you believe it or not, you are affected by those people, whether you realize it or not, and it matters. Um, So I want to tell you today, uh, when you struggle, maybe you're going through some hard times, Uh, in life, and certainly in sales, do not close yourself off, especially through difficult times. Stay plugged in. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says this. It says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And this is the key component to this scripture here. It says, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Uh, Certainly one of the first things we can do is neglect the community we have. Neglect those folks that have been around us when we've been successful. And that's one of the last things that we want to do. Uh, So what I want to tell you is is, uh, don't neglect to to be around others. Uh, You know, don't neglect your company. Don't neglect the good company that you've you've had through the times you were successful. And uh, don't uh, separate yourself from those people. You can't get off to yourself uh, and and be successful. And it is my uh, at least that's that's my opinion. Uh, and then another thing I want to tell you is have a little fun. Try to enjoy what you do. Have some friendly competition. 
When you have outrageous things happen on sales calls, instead of getting down about it, call someone. Have a laugh about it. I can tell you numerous times. The old saying is, it's better to laugh than cry sometimes, and I think that's certainly true. I know there were a number of times uh, when I struggled, I'd call maybe my dad, maybe one of my fellow agents, and talk to him about something just absolutely absurd that just happened. And it could be disheartening. Maybe somebody says something ridiculous or comes out and acts a fool because they don't want to meet with you or, or something like that. No telling what could happen. Uh, but I want to tell you this. Studies show that a good, hearty laugh relieves some physical tension and stress, leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes. The old saying is laughter is makes good like a medicine. Not many people laugh by themselves. you got to have community. you got to have someone to talk to. Uh, but laughter uh, actually is good for you, uh, so make sure that uh, that you do that. Another saying is, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I've never thought of it till recently, but you know, lemonade is still sour. It is. There are things in life that are going to be a little sour, uh, but I, what I would encourage you to do is to add a little sugar and roll with it. Uh, you'll never remove the sour people and sour situations from your life entirely. Just give them some grace, and when you find yourself uh, getting a little sour, give yourself a little grace as well. Add some sugar, swallow it down, and move on. Uh, I mentioned that you'll never remove negative people from your life entirely, but when you are picking out people to spend the most time with, people that will have the most influence in your life, be selective. As a matter of fact, Scripture talks about avoiding bad counsel. It says this in Psalms 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. There are a lot of scoffers in this world. There are a lot of people that have a negative opinion, and they want you to hear about it. Somehow it makes them feel better to release that frustration, but they just put it on you. Don't sit in the seat of scoffers. Some people always see the negatives in life. Avoid these people if possible. There are better options to choose from for friends. So what kind of friends, you might ask? What kind of friends in counsel should you look for? Well, um, the advice of a good friend, and maybe a symptom of a good friend, is someone who is always an encouragement, someone that will always encourage you. Proverbs 27, 9 says this, ointments and perfume encourage the heart. In a similar way, a friend's advice is sweet to the soul. Maybe that's a definition of a friend. Uh, as someone that they encourage you, they lift you up. Uh, they're like ointment and perfume to your heart. Uh, their advice is sweet to your soul. Uh, that's what Proverbs says. So pick, pick friends that will encourage you. And ultimately, uh, there is one friend who will never let you down, and that's Jesus. Followers of Christ should be a good place to start when you're looking for friends to put around you. Uh, certainly, uh, you want to um, avoid bad friends, but good friends are a good place to start. Uh, and there's a scripture on that as well. I want to share with you Proverbs 18:24 It said, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Uh, and I think we know who that is, and that's Jesus Christ. And certainly scripture talks about that as well. Uh, so what do you do whenever, whenever you find yourself in that situation uh, where you, maybe you don't have good friends? Um, Try to, try to start hanging out with people. We've always talked about hang out with people that you want to be like. Uh, hang out with people that are successful. There are plenty of people here at One Life that are successful, that are good Christian people, that are positive people. Start hanging out with them. But one thing I want to encourage you to do is to start by being that friend to someone else. Uh, and, and how do you do that? You put your friends above yourself like Jesus does, or like Jesus did. John fifteen thirteen says this, No one has greater love than this, than one that lays down his life for his friends. You know, I've been to a lot of funerals in my life, um, uh, a handful of them. Being a musician and being involved in, in a church, uh, you tend to do that. And, of course, you, you want to support those people, the family members and all that. 
uh, at that time of difficulty in their lives. But there's no more depressing funeral, you guys, than, than that of someone who had no friends or no, no true close friends. Was that person's life really a success? Who did they impact and what did they leave behind ultimately? Uh, I, I'm going to submit to you, uh, they actually had very little success. And clearly they didn't impact that many people. And I don't know exactly what they did leave behind. Uh, so I want to encourage you, have friends. Have good Christian friends uh, that encourage you and have influence on you. And then you turn around and be that type of friend to someone that needs it as well. And never stop doing it. Uh, matter of fact, I want to share with you now 1 Thessalonians 5.11. It says, So encourage each other and build each other up as you are already doing. And this first scripture uh, bears repeating. Hebrews 10.24 and 25 says, And let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Uh, being successful as a believer, uh, what is that? The example of Christ is to always be concerned about others. That starts with your family. It extends to those that you work with and continues on to those that become your clients. You have the chance to impact a lot of people in this job. And I want you to look at it like that as an opportunity. Uh, if you want to be successful, start by surrounding yourself with good friends, people that really care about you and share your same ideals. One life is full of high character, yet highly successful and highly motivated people. So guess what? My closing, in my closing statement, plug in and let's go. Because one of the most important components to your success, I believe, is keeping plugged in with community. Uh, I'd like to close with a short prayer. Uh, so let's do that now. God, we thank you so much that you love us. We thank you so much that you died on the cross for us, that you gave all for us, and that you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Lord, even when we have no one else, and maybe no one answers that phone call, maybe no one seems to be around, you are always there. So first of all, we want to cling to that friendship. You are the ultimate friend. And so, God, we thank you that you did lay down your life for us. And, God, we also uh, want to be that, ex be that example, share the love of Christ, share that friendship with others. We want to be the type of friend that would encourage, that would build up others. Uh, and we want to be good counsel to others. Uh, let us not be scoffers. Let us not be negative. Let us not be loners that get off to ourselves when we find times of trouble. But let us double down uh, on you and on quality friends that you put into our lives. Let us seek good counsel. Uh, we, sh we know that Scripture talks about the wisdom of that. And so we want to do that. We thank you for all that you've blessed us bit with. Be with each and every one of the agents on this phone call this morning. And, uh, again, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you are going to do. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being on the call. One Life, don't forget to register uh, for One Life One Life's Academy and Leadership Summit coming up December 5th through the 7th. We thank you again so much for being on the call. If you have anything you want us to uh, have here on the call, maybe some folks that you think might be good speakers, we'd love to have them as well. Uh, so thank you again for being on the call. We'll look forward to seeing you next week at 1030. God bless and have a wonderful week.